With my favorite top three features inside Resolve 20, we're going to take this image from here to here. We're gonna take this shot from here to here. And it's gonna be so easy that even if this is your first time opening Resolve, you're gonna be able to create it with me. Now, the good news is that it is a lot more stable, obviously, because it is a full release. Beta was driving me absolutely crazy. But most importantly, the three features that I picked out, two of those three have been optimized. They are working much better. One still needs a little bit of work, but I'm gonna give you a pro hack how to get around that. For those that don't know me, my name is Kazi. I've worked with brands like Adidas, Amazon Prime, Universal Studios, and I make no just straightforward color grading tutorials so you can work with your dream clients. All right, so now we're inside Resolve. This footage is shot on RE35. So I've gone ahead and converted it to Rec. 709. And now this is going to be our reference Rec 709. So once we build our crazy look, we can go back and see what we're doing. First step, as always, we're just going to balance our shot. I'm going to go under gamma, set that to linear, kill the Luma mix. If you want to learn more about that, there's going to be a link in the description. Your gain becomes your offset in linear. So we're going to just go ahead and get all that blue out. I don't want to do anything too crazy, but I just want to get some color out but I want to respect like the magenta that's happening. So I, I want to keep that in the skin tones, but like, look at just with such a simple touch, what a huge difference we made. That's the beauty of working in linear. I'm going to go right here. And now this is just going to be a creative change. So I'm going to lift my gain up, pull my gamma down, lift my gain up, keep it somewhere around here, put my gamma down. I'm just looking at the skin tones and I want to keep some weight in there. So before and after massive difference, if I take these two huge, huge, huge difference. Okay. Now a couple of things that we're seeing. So the highlights need to be controlled a little bit and uh, we just want to separate her from the background. That's what we want to do. And then we want to isolate her and make some changes that only affect her and not the background. So I got to tell you with the beta, I was having a lot of consistency issues. It just kept crashing, and especially with the tools that I was using and that we're going to try it now. And I have tested it already and it is rock solid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a node and put it right here. This is going to be for her, okay? But first I wanna go and attack the background. So I'm just going to create another node. I'm gonna put it right here, okay? We're going to go under depth map. And what we want to do is we just want to isolate her and grab everything in the background. So I'm going to invert it and let's go ahead and make some changes. So I'm going to go under our adjustments and I'm going to just do this kind of thing. I still want like a little bit of effect to come through like a nice feather, if you will. So we'll just do something like that. And then I'm just going to turn on post processing. So super, super clean. And this is it. We just did it. So I'm going to turn off the actual depth map preview. I'm not going to make any changes on this. So that is the fun part about this tutorial, because what happens here is that we're restricted to only one OFX. If I were to drop something here, like I can't drop another OFX. Um, because we already have an OFX going on here. So then how do you add a lot more personality to your image using the data that we got from here, our alpha channel? So we do that by creating a new node and we're going to transfer that alpha channel. And now I can have all the fun that I want. First thing that I want to do, remember we wanted to just control that highlights a little bit. So I'm actually going to go under my highlights and pull these down. And if I do before and after, you see that we're making a change only to the background and not affecting anything right here. So let's go to 100, okay? And what we can do, the beautiful thing about it is that I can just create a window like that and we only affect this area right here, okay? And we can just soften it. So that's never going to be a problem. We can even go in our gain and pull it down to something like this. And you can see how much of that detail we brought back. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. And now what I want to do, I want to create a parallel node. 
So that way we can keep stacking our changes borrowed by our depth map. So here I actually want to bring the background up. So like, look at what I'm doing. Like, I actually want to like really like look at the difference that it makes. This is before this is after like who is to say that you always got to keep the background dead. Like by doing that. Now, if we go to our rec 709, this is our log rec 709. This is where we're at. I mean, just look at the power of this tool. It's absolutely insane. And we kept our highlights in control. Another thing that I want to do, I want to go ahead and I want to create another parallel node. I'm going to transfer over that alpha channel. This time I want to type in glow. And this is exactly what I meant when I said we can do multiple different things. So I want to go and change this to screen. Now I want to take my shine threshold and start pulling it back and like, look at what it's doing. So now at this point, we can make it like super glowy tight like that, or we can make it more like foggy and dreamlike. I like that. So this is very Mad Max like we can even go in our color filters and start having fun with it. Like we can really try to go in that neon cyberpunk world. And now if I do before and after, I mean, come on. So if I take these three on and off, like, look at, she is untouched and it's all going to latch on. So let's play it. Let's see it. Like, look at this. Like this is absolutely out of this world, guys, what we can do with that. Before I forget, I just want to say that I've put together a training that came straight from your guys' biggest concerns. So if you want to learn two to three months worth of content that you would just stumble through from video to video on YouTube in one hour, you must check out that training. Link is going to be in the description. Watch it after you finish this video. Let's get back in. All right, so now we're going to move on to Magic Mask 2. I don't remember the last time I worked on a project where I didn't use Magic Mask 2. Like, I'm absolutely obsessed with it. But there is an issue that I was hoping would be fixed with the full release, and it's not. And that is the optimization part. It chokes. It chokes really bad. So we're just going to go right here. And... Um, I want to make sure that when you click on these three dots that we don't have the legacy object mass selected. So now the new version is active. We're just going to turn this on so we can see what we're selecting. I'm going to click right here. Select the face. I'm going to basically select the entire Chingadera, everything. So now everything is selected and I'm going to set it to better. I'm going to come out and I'm just going to render it. You basically can do a similar thing to what I just showed you with depth map, like create multiple nodes, parallel nodes. I will not recommend it because as of now, it's just not really optimized. It chokes. So I would just say, do whatever you got to do on the same node. And then one of the things that we can do to make it work even more seamlessly, I'm about to show you. So now that we have that selected, uh, we can come down and, again, like it's so good. Let's just turn it on and go through it and look at it. I mean, just look at this. This is just too good, guys. I'm going to park it here. I'm going to come out. And all I want to do is I just want to kind of use my gamma and gain to like give it some life. So like I'm just going to go in my gain. I'm just going to lift up my image. I'm going to go in my gamma, pull it down a little bit. And you know what I want to do? I want to go in my midtone and just kind of dial it back. What that's going to do is that's going to soften her skin and give her that glowy vibe. So like, look, at we made a pretty big change. So this is before and after. So this is before, this is after. And it's all like positive change. Uh, we can push it a little bit more if we want. I don't want to go too crazy. And uh, what would, do we want to do with our gamma? We can bring it down because I don't want the skin to like feel thin before and after. Okay, this is looking great. That's where we're at. Now, before I show you the pro hack, I want to do our last feature, which is our AI Ultra NR. People would say, well, this has been around since Resolve 19. What are you talking about? That thing that happened with Resolve 20 in my experience is that this, unlike Magic Mask 2, got pretty optimized. 
And I personally feel like I'm using it a lot more. It's it's much faster how fast it renders and especially when you do node caching. So I'm going to show you what that is. First of all, let's click analyze so we can activate it. Why did I actually use it? So let's get super close right here. I'm going to turn it off and just like look at how gunky this is, all of this. And then I'm going to turn it on. It does such a beautiful job because it's still leaving the monochromatic grain in there. So then it feels like it still has weight and it gives us that film negative feel without really ruining our image. All right, so now here we are, but the problem is this, okay? Look at, we are only getting 2.5 frames per second. A lot of it is depth map and right here, Magic Mask 2. So to fix this, you can just go under playback, go to render cache and just set it to smart and then click on timeline. You're going to see this line up here and then that has to render through. And then once it's rendered, we can just hit play and just look at this. Now it's playing back in real time. It's just that simple. So this is what we had, Rec 709. This is log Rec 709. This is where we came. I mean, this thing is absolutely mental. What you can do is specifically with these powerhouse of like OFX inside Resolve. You saw how powerful node caching is, especially when you're working with a node tree that is around 25 nodes or more. I have it turned on all the time. You can just go make a quick cup of coffee, come back and everything is rendered. And it is so much better, especially if you're doing a session with a client Do not have like choppy five frames a second footage because it just kills your presentation. And presentation as a colorist is everything. So definitely use this when you can. And guys, if you're enjoying the video, then please do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you can be notified about my next video. Let's get back in. Let's look at this shot. Already perfect. I mean, th so this is Rec. 709. I mean, look at this. So basically I'm taking Rec. 709, working in DaVinci Wide Gamma, DaVinci Wide Gamma to Rec. 709 because I want all my tools to behave the same way what I'm used to. That's what I'm doing this. It's not giving me extra dynamic range or anything like that. But just look at this. It just, it looks so beautiful. So like, you're probably like, dude, what are you going to do to it? And how can you make it better? Let's, let's give it a try. Before this would have been impossible before depth map. Like, how can I get the background? Like if, if the goal is, let me just grab everything behind him organically and then manipulate it whatever I want. Like before this would have been just, I don't even know what you would have done. Usually what you would do in a case like this is this, you would go create a window, gradient window. You would put it right here. You would do shift H. You would pull this down to something like this. And then let's just go. Okay. Let's just make this whatever color, right? Like we want to go there. Well, what's happening is that we are putting this color in front of him. It, it is in front of him. So like it's actually affecting him as well, because if I do shift H, you can see what I'm doing, right? So now that problem is absolutely solved. If we go right here and see what we're selecting, let's go in our effects. Well, first of all, what we need to do is invert it. And then all we have to do is just this. Like now we just selected everything behind him. We can go under post-processing to just make sure that we just leave all of this alone because like before it's kind of a blob super clean i mean even just like look at his hair strand right here like this is insane now we can turn off the depth map and now we can do the same thing so like let's go there right so want to make it really really like freaking crazy sunset and we want to pull it down to like something like this and let's just go before and after. So we thought that was cool before. Now look at it. And we can even do the, you know, like, so it blends in better. So now I just use my lift to pull that down. And I can keep going there if I want. Like, you know, create like this very nice magenta-ish. And that, see how it's blending so much better? And it's actually behind him now. So let's play it through. I was going to play it through. Nothing is going to get in his way. Like he's not getting cut out or getting like a weird artifacting or anything like that. And how, you know, 
like an effect like that in the past, like would have been just so difficult to do and how easy this was to achieve before and after. And we thought before was perfect, did not need anything like this was perfect. I mean, look at how easily and organically we got there. Same thing goes right here. Rec 709, this is our final. So there you have it. Do you guys have any specific new features that I might not have covered, especially when it comes to color grading? Drop them down below. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace, fam. Oh, 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 oh,